Thanks for tuning in to Red Belt Radio. The following episode is scheduled for one fall. I'm Jason, and this show is dedicated to world wonder ring stardom. Today, I'm covering stardom's controversial decisions involving the faction known as hate, including the recent series of absolutely shocking twists and the overall approach by stardom to change its identity as a promotion. Specifically, I'm going to offer my critiques of stardom on a storytelling and entertainment level and discuss what I think works within this provocative group known as hate, and quite simply what I believe isn't working at all. This transmission will be critical of stardom's choices, storytelling, and their handling of the hate faction and its members. If you don't want to hear something quite that critical, I definitely understand. Listen further if you dare. I've had several days to collect my thoughts since the weekend of Stardom's Sapporo Wonder and World Rendezvous events, and after seeing the recent 5-star GP press conference and very recent Stardom house show in Hamamatsu on August 4th, I'd like to share some of my theories about the things that just aren't clicking at the moment. In case you've been feeling like stardom has seemed off recently, I think I might be able to explain why. If you find these transmissions valuable, please give this a like, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment to let me know what you think. As you probably know by now, stardom's final week in July was one of its most disruptive weeks ever. Across three shows, we witnessed five title changes, two main event character betrayals, the naming of two newish factions, and what appears to be the destruction of two legacy factions in the process. Attempting all of these things within that narrow of a time frame was a mistake. It came across as rushed and nonsensical and made it difficult for any of the individual changes to be given the uniqueness or importance they deserved. And for the factions that were removed, With their years of history, tons of fan support, countless merch items, recognizable branding, music, attitude, symbolism, and importance, not even a serviceable story could be provided to either prepare the fans for the outcome via foreshadowing or satisfy the fans through drama with a meaningful sense of closure. With that out of the way, hate is here. And I would argue that some of the moving pieces work. What I think we will find is that when something does seem to be working, it tends to involve characters that come across as just that. Characters. Tangible, recognizable, understandable, distinct. And when something doesn't seem to be working, it tends to involve non-characters. Cogs in a wheel, moving in a direction simply because the plot demands it. Rena strikes me as a character. She has a past, including goals and a worldview. These are the things that inform who she is and how she got here. She has a present, which are the storylines that involve her largely because of her established past. She lastly has a future, which are things for fans to look forward to and a reason to buy tickets. Rena's past has involved her disdain for hags or anyone from the older generations, her desire to surpass her sister Hanon, and her role as the bully or final boss, antagonizing the various rookies who have been featured heavily this year. Her present involves her dominant role as a champion, and the rivalry with Hanon that involves her attempt to demolish Hanon's title reign record. Her future involves the importance of each upcoming title defense, her role as a pivotal figure in the upcoming New Blood shows, and her championship tag team with the rarely featured Azusa Inaba. Thekla also strikes me as a character. She has a past as well, including goals and a worldview. These are the things that inform who she is and how she got here. She has a present, which are the storylines that involve her largely because of her established past. She lastly has a future, which are things for fans to look forward to and a reason to buy tickets. I will let you read for yourself what these things are, because I'm trying to save time where I can. There is still a lot to go over. 
Now, when we get to the curious case of Saya Kamitani, I have to say that I don't think we have a character, at least not yet. She's a villain now. As a villain, she has a past, which is her resentment for Utami leaving her and the alleged incident of fan harassment at a stardom meet and greet. The Utami bit she referenced specifically in a Tokyo Sports article, and the fan bit is implied due to Saya repeating what the fan said when she grabbed the mic in Sapporo on July 28th. These are what we have to work with. Saya told us at the press conference essentially that the rest of who she once was is gone. The issue here is, neither the Utami resentment nor the fan situation can go anywhere. Unless Saya is going to have a grudge match with either Utami or the fan from the alleged incident, these don't translate to anything that can be hashed out in a stardom ring. One might argue that Saya's resentment against Utami points to a larger issue of losing her friends. She lost her friends in Queen's Quest, after all. But that also doesn't work. Saya had a friend, a devoted one, in Micah, and she betrayed that friendship to make other friends. It's a contradictory character motivation, even if we want to assume it exists. One might also say that Saya can always sentimentally draw from her past in Queen's Quest to make upcoming storylines really connect. That is true to a point. However, I've lost faith that stardom is capable of pulling that off. I say that because we've been here before. In 2024, storylines seem to get started for bizarre reasons and then fizzle out just as it seems something might have a chance of developing. April. Starlight Kid was kicked out of Oedotai for reasons no one can explain, and a number of other wrestlers became invested in her future. Would she follow Tam Nakano? Reconcile with Mayu Iwatani? All of those potential morsels were pretty much dropped. It simply served as filler until SLK could form her own group in order to hype up the five-star. June, Queen's Quest and Oedotai reignited their faction warfare for reasons no one can explain, and it, too, seemed to serve as a vehicle for erasing old factions and as filler until the hate faction could be announced to similarly hype up the five-star. Until I see the proof, I can't just go off of the assumption that stardom will convert Saya's heel turn into some kind of satisfying or even well-thought-out journey. Let's linger on the Saya Kamitani situation for a while here, because not only do I think she lacks a tangible character right now, I also think she lacks a creative direction or even an entertaining setup to hook the fans and sell tickets. Saya's first appearance after betraying Micah in Sapporo was at the five-star GP press conference on August 3rd. This, to me, was a missed opportunity. With so many questions surrounding Saya at that time, stardom should have done something besides present her so plainly and inconsequentially. I took a couple of minutes and came up with some alternatives. Option 1. Remain mysterious. This is similar to what Mina Shirakawa did at the 2022 press conference after her injury. In that sense, it has the bonus of being all the more sinister by referencing Mina's injury which occurred at the hands of Saya. But the goal is, obscure some of Saya's appearance. It can be as simple as a hat, sunglasses, and a face mask. Don't show everything yet. Have some allure. Indicate that something is coming, that we will be seeing a new Saya that there is still a reason to be hooked and to buy tickets. Option two, show the conflict. Split Saya's visual gimmick down the middle. Half of her attire is still red and gold, indicating that some of the former human Saya is still there, and the other half is midnight black. Twisted, indicating that the corruption of Saya is taking hold. The goal is... Tell a larger, more emotional story of what is happening and give a reason for other wrestlers in stardom to care. They remember who Saya Kamitani was. They think they can still save her. They have multiple angles to approach the matches and mic performances from. We know obviously that stardom did neither of these things, but here's where they still have a chance to make up some ground. Saya's official ring gear. It has the potential to convey so much to make her role as a villain matter. 
hinting at the past, playing with her traditional imagery, and making her look like a star. The key themes I went with when thinking about her upcoming ring attire were symbolism, star power, tragedy, and artistry. Saya is more than capable of making her matches and storylines unique. Don't take that away. Right now, Saya comes across as a juvenile delinquent, and that is the least original thing possible within this faction. There are already multiple juvenile delinquents, and repeating the formula simply isn't good enough. Let's take a moment to survey the traffic conditions along the Hate Highway. This is the next issue with telling a villain Saya story. In terms of booking, it's not an upward climb or even a lateral move, it's a step backwards. Momo Watanabe all over again. Saya is taking up space alongside Momo, Thekla, and Konami. I don't know who among them is important or an actual threat to the top tier heroes. And it's going to take a hell of a lot to convince me that any of these four aren't stuck and are able to actually advance. Let's move on from Saya and talk about the boss. Natsuko Tora. I don't have anything against Natsuko herself, and if you were a big fan of hers, I think that's cool. But I don't believe she's being handled well. Natsuko goes where the plot demands, she does what the plot demands, and the referees respond according to what the plot demands. Do we want a wrestler to gain more fan sympathy? Have Natsuko show up and attack them. The formula truly seems to be that simple. And when she is wrestling people, the punishment for cheating seems to go down as the importance of her opponent goes up. She cheated versus Sayaka Kurara and hilariously lost the match. She cheated against Mina Shirakawa, but for some reason that was a no contest. She cheated against Micah and no action was taken, allowing her to become stardom's new red belt champion. The only consistency tied to her at all lies in the fact that she keeps making enemies out of the entire roster, which anyone would realize is going to backfire. It also just isn't very interesting. A faction war specifically between hate and God's Eye is interesting. A revenge story specifically between Shuri and Konami is interesting. The more we zoom out, the more we spam hate antics, the more factions we involve, the more of a mess we start to make. And if Hamamatsu's finale is to be taken seriously, it appears that we're ultimately heading towards a rematch between Tam Nakano and Natsuko Tora, a rematch of Stardom Golden Fight 2023. First of all, Tam beat Natsuko there, so I'm not worried for her. Second of all, the match was quite flawed, and I'm not convinced they have good enough chemistry in ring to close out the year. Third of all, Tam tried her violet screwdriver multiple times, and on the last attempt, she was badly injured. I don't want even a slight chance of that happening again. Fourth of all, and maybe worst of all, Stardom is rushing this very predictable storyline into play when they had, sitting in their lap, an admittedly predictable but much deeper and more meaningful storyline. A storyline involving the journey and redemption of Saya Kamitani from last year's five star through to this one, with all of her heartbreaks and failures and all of the connections to her maintained by the roster and the fandom. If we compare Saya's journey over the last 12 months to Tam's, Saya's is filled with a lot of dramatic material, while Tam's has significant gaps. Why did we drop such a promising angle only to become this chaotic, unpredictable company for three shows, only to go back to being predictable by blatantly telegraphing a finale that has far less buildup and far less organic investment? Maybe Tam vs. Natsuko is not the route they end up going. But if it is, I have no idea why they've chosen to play it out like this. At the end of the day, this is stardom we're talking about. The wrestlers involved are endlessly talented and their creativity has almost no limits. There is plenty of time for things to turn around and most importantly, I hope people like Saya Kamitani are having fun doing what they're doing. I have confidence that these stories can be converted into something stellar. But will they?
What do you think is working in terms of the hate faction and the overall storytelling in stardom? What do you think is missing the mark and where do you think they can course correct? If you found this transmission valuable, please give it a like, subscribe to the channel, or leave a comment to let me know what you think. Thanks for listening to Red Belt Radio.